whatever translation. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, the angels are singing, Hosanna in the highest. We are in the Sunday school. No praise worship time. Will you sing with the angels? On the last day. Keep that question. In your left hand. On the last day. In heaven. Will you sing. Hosanna in the highest. Praise the Lord. Okay. And the center truth. Christians are the vehicle. For manifesting Jesus love. Power. And glory. When you say something is a vehicle, it's a conduit. It's a passageway. You are an ambassador for demonstrating what? Three of them there. The love, the power, and the glory of Jesus Christ. Again, we need to ponder on that too. Let me extray my life. Extray your life. Are you a vehicle for the demonstration of the love, the power, and the glory of Jesus Christ? You as an individual can answer that, and I can answer my, for myself. I can't answer for you. Praise the Lord. For every lesson, there must be an objective. And we are saying for this lesson, we all as students, because I'm a student myself too, should be able to explain the importance of triumphant entry of Jesus Christ to Jerusalem. Because that was not the first time he enters Jerusalem. Was that the first time? Was that the last? But that's probably the last time. What is different about this entrance? Why did he have to specifically prepare in a different way, both by himself and getting people to prepare that triumphant entrance? So we are saying we will be able to talk about the importance. The key three outline that will guide us is the preparation for the Savior King and then the presentation of the King himself and then the proclamation of the king. But let me ask. Jesus Christ is the king. Unquestionable. No doubt about it. In fact, whether you doubt it, you don't accept, does it change the fact? <coughs> the truth is the truth. Whether you accept it, it does not change the truth. Whether you do not accept it, it does not change the truth. 
Jesus Christ, our Savior, is the King. That's a fact. If you like, contest it to anywhere. It doesn't change. I just think we should clear that. Now, when I was looking through this lesson outline, it personally ministered to me. And what picture came to my mind is if a governor, I mean, if a president, maybe our president is visiting a state, the preparation, both in the media and everywhere, would have been. That is on one part. What about for the host? It must have been a fantastic preparation. But there is one thing that is always funny for me. That's when they go and begin to sweep the streets, paint, and do some artificiality as if that person coming has not been seen that state in the state that it was before announcing that he is coming. Has he not been seen the state? So it is only that day when he now passed their street and see the beautiful street. Does that change anything? This is human being. But thank God that our Lord Jesus Christ is not like that. Everything about Jesus Christ was foretold right from his conception, right? Even up until this moment, how he will triumphantly enter Jerusalem. We are all foretold. So it is important that we see this triumphant entrance as historical. And it's prophetic as well. What aspect of our lives has prophecy been spoken to? Are we expecting the fulfillment? Again, let's keep that in our hand. My prayer is that whatever prophetic release that has been spoken into our lives shall come to fulfillment. Positive ones in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay, this Sunday school, and I have the freedom to call anybody to contribute, isn't it? The teacher don't need the permission of the student to call the student to contribute. If I look into your direction and I call you, you have to contribute. Hallelujah. Now, let's take a look at the preparation, and that is in Matthew, you know, 21 that we read from verse 1 to 3. We can see that Jesus Christ himself took time to prepare the specifics. He knows what he wanted for that entrance. And we can see that he caught two of his disciples. Hey, the two of you, go to this place. He didn't say, go on the street and be searching for it. Was that the instruction? They are not to search. Go to this specific place, Belfast. And when you get there, you will see this specific court. What is the specific action to do? Lose it. I begin to picture if it is in a in our time. It won't be a cult. Maybe it will be a brand new vehicle, limo, or whatever it is you call it. And you, maybe Pastor Dairo and my brother, I say two of you go to Victoria Island, specific place. You will see a brand new vehicle. Nobody has ever used it. Get the car and bring it down for me. What will you do? <laughs> eh? Receipt. Okay? Pastor Daro will want to see the receipt of the project. That is, the price has been paid. Don't go and put me into trouble. 
Because the person sending the message will not be there when the slapping starts. For Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. If anybody questions you, just tell them. And so maybe it's the a senior pastor that is telling you and said, Pastor Dairo, if anybody asks you, tell them, Reverend Noah Jefe sent you. Even despite the fact that here is not said, <laughs> where is the receipt, sir? But Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, the Lord of all. The God that knows the end from the beginning, He knows everything. Send specific message and told them if anybody questions you, this is. Tell them we have need of it. Of all the animals, why the cold? I want us to discuss. Why the cold? To show Jesus Christ humility. Anything else? Okay. Just keep it and okay, yes, there's a hand there. To me, I think um cold. Is one of the the animals that is highly respected, and only kings write on it. So he needed it so that at least he should portray that action of king. Okay. And quote of all the animals that I've seen the pictures, not like the horse. The horse is aggressive. It's aggressive. I wonder if I'd been the horse and the horse is hopping in the midst of the crowd. He can go and jump on somebody. Eh? Or go and kick somebody. But the horse is very milk, make, gentle, and can be walking wherever and obedient as well. If a horse, if you don't pull the, what do you call it, the jarnu very well, <coughs> can go and fling the head somewhere and knock somebody down. But the court is not like that. And this is telling us as Christian, how do I live my life? How are you living your life? Praise the Lord. So like I said, specific instruction we are given where to go, what to see, what to do, and what to bring. Very specific. There is no doubt in it. Praise the Lord. Also, do we know that we have specific assignments in this world that we are? God sent you and I for specific assignment. And if we must triumphantly enter Jerusalem, we must carry out that assignment. Because we give account. We will give account. How do I run this race? What has been committed into my hand in terms of talent? What have I done with it? We will all give account. Praise the Lord. For that preparation, any question? Or somebody want to contribute something? Okay, thank you. Okay. And then we move to the second phase. Preparation of the Savior King. Verse 4 to 7. Can somebody please read? Verse 4 to 7. Maybe I should read from here. All this was done that was spoken by the prophet saying, tell the daughter of Zion, 
behold, your king is coming to you. Lowly. It's a lowly king. It's not a proud king. And sitting on a donkey, a coat, a foal of donkey. So the disciple went and did as Jesus commanded. Verse 7. They brought the donkey and the coat, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. You see, when they got the coat, before the coat was brought to Jesus Christ, it was just an animal. We agree? Just an animal. And then let's look at the situation of that animal tied to a stake with a certain length of rope that can only go certain radius. We can see so many limitations. But the moment the disciples got there, what did they do? Was set free. And the moment that code was set free and they are taking it down to the master, he must have been very happy. But they, something happened. The moment they put their clothes on the coat and the master started riding on the coat, what changed? Ma? Mike, please. Is it that the animal become bigger? No. Um, the, the animal status changed. Okay. It, was, it appears it was glorified. Okay. Yeah. The status of the animal immediate of the cult immediately changed. Changed to what? The, the, the cult was not married before. The status has now become married. Is that what people saw? And then they start prostrating, throwing their clothes down. What changed? Let's, let's interact with ourselves. Let's interact with ourselves. And sometimes, you know, when Christ wears us up, immediately our status changes. At the moment Christ climbed, Jesus Christ climbed on that coat, everything changed. Everybody started, Hosanna in the highest. They start bowing down. Go to the court and say, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> and that's why, as Christians, we should be very, very careful. When God is using us, we shouldn't think, Yes, my time has come. When I pray, immediately signs and wonders follow, I will begin to take the glory to ourselves. Because as I was reading, immediately Christ entered Jerusalem and our Lord Jesus Christ came down from the cult. Were they still bowing down for the cult? So when God is using us, we just return the glory to God alone. Praise the Lord. Contribution, please. You know, it's always good for us to have Sunday school applied to real life situations. Not just for us to restrict ourselves to what is written uh, in our manual. Let's apply it to our Christian life today. If we look at even within our own organization, there have been so many men of God that God had used and is still using powerfully. How are we taking it? Yes, sir. Uh -huh, yes. I'm glad we're having various. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I think this lesson calls for personal examination of our lives. You know, it's good to read all these uh, Bible studies, I mean, and uh, Sunday school. But I think we really need to draw it down 
for our own lives. Somebody did a cartoon recently and there was a birthday of a father and all the children were saying that uh, they have never had they can't, I mean this is the best father that God can give to them. And the cartoon was asking. He showed about three or four bad days of fathers that their children are saying is the, they are the best father in the world. He now asks, whose father is destroying Nigeria then? <laughs> if all these fathers are the best in the world, and Nigeria is the way it is, whose father is destroying this country the way it is? I think even as Christians, just like our sister said, said something very, very profound when she was leading prayers. She said, all these diseases, I will not place on you, but I will place it on your enemies. And she said, she also reflected that there are people she hated on her, her own self. That means if those people are Christians and they are praying, that prayer, that prayer, that disease will come upon those that hate them. And he's one of the people that hate them. So, I think uh, we should examine our lives. How do we respond to situations? How do we live our lives? Is, this is the call for self-examination. And the Almighty God will help all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you give daddy mic? There is need for self-examination. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I really didn't want to stand up to say anything. But the Holy Spirit will not uh, let me rest. Especially, the Holy Spirit was saying where there is unity of the Spirit and where there is uh, need to edify one another that I must stand up to speak. And I want to relate it to what uh, the leader has said this morning when he said, when they were singing Osana in the highest. In the first instance, that exact song we sang at our family altar this morning. And uh, when we sang it, I, I mean, in my spirit, I said, we, I mean, we need to add two more verses to that song based on the question you asked that. Are we singing along with the angels? And I remember, and I, uh, I was singing along with the angels, and I discovered that, yes, after we say Hosanna in the air, the angels are singing, we also have to add these two verses. The people are singing. We also are singing. Because we must sing along. We must individually proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ as king. Thank Praise you very much. Okay. Also, I'd like to point out that the entrance of Jesus Christ to Jerusalem was a fulfillment of a prophetic proclamation. And I ask ourselves, are you fulfilling the prophetic proclamation to your life as a Christian? If yes, we glorify the name of our God. If no, why? We should answer that why so that we can make amendment. We have talked about the cult. And then I'd like us to reflect. You know, large crowd. All of us, them are singing, waving their hand, throwing their clothes down. Is it just because it is Jesus Christ? Because he had fed them sometimes ago? Because recently he just uh, wake up Lazarus or they just joined the crowd for joining the crowd's sake. Because it's surprising the same set of crowd after they turn back and say crucify him. They are among those crowds that are singing and shouting Hosanna 
buying their and throwing palm fronds and their clothes. And just a few days after, crucify him. Do we know that's exactly what we do in our Christian life? Today, when we enter in the church, we shout it loudest, hallelujah. And in our neighborhood, in our houses, we are crucifying Jesus Christ. Again, call for self examination. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Is there any question before we move to the third? Yes. Okay, my, my is uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. So, my own is a contribution. When you were asking, uh, I want to build on what our daddy just mentioned. That are we singing Osana? Are we preparing? Yesterday, I was meditating on this. And I found out that why it's difficult or why it seems that we're not preparing for the is coming is because in most cases, we're building on the flesh. We're building on the old cell. Uh, but when you read uh, Ephesians 4.22, it said, but you cut off concerning the former manner of life of old man, which is corrupt according to the distful lust. So what Christ, you know, for us to start this uh, journey, no matter how far we, we think we've gone, is for us to cut, until you cut off, it's not asking us to, most people when you come, you build on it, you build on the flesh, you, you will address it so that maybe it's fit for church. No, we are asking, there are, what the Bible is asking us is that we must cut off, and that is the foundation, until we go there and cut off that old life and not take off the new one. If you are still saying uh, amend it this way, and uh, we are still amending on the old on the old flesh, it will be difficult for us to uh, to make this uh, <laughs> this uh, this journey and the preparation that we're talking of. I just want to build on it that we need to deliberately individually, collectively cut off our lifestyle, cut off everything, and now put on that deal. Then that's when we start to run the race. Mm. Thanks. Amen. Now the last phase, proclamation of the Savior. There are specific assignments given to us for the proclamation of Jesus Christ. When we are given that assignment, go ye into the world to preach the gospel. What we are simply being told is go and proclaim Jesus Christ to the world. When we are told build my church, what is simply telling us go and proclaim Jesus Christ to the, to the world. When we are told love your neighbor as yourself. Whatever specific instructions are given, this is what is representing Jesus Christ now in the midst of the people. Oh, beautiful all that we read about Jesus Christ entering Jerusalem. When he comes, because he's triumphantly coming back, what state will he meet me what state will it meet you? Those assignments that he asked us to do, preach the gospel, evangelize, win souls, will I be able to say, welcome daddy. Thus far, I am giving account of the talent that you have given to me. You gave me one, I've multiplied it to two. You gave me two, I've multiplied it to four. You gave me five, it's now ten. And so on and so forth. I am praying and admonishing us today because this is Sunday school. That Jesus Christ's triumphant entrance into Jerusalem to me is just like giving us a rehearsal 
of his coming back. When we sing that song, I'm thinking when my Lord shall come again. I'm thinking when my Lord shall come. I'm thinking when my Lord shall come again. I wonder how that day shall be. We have watched several films that picture what that day will be like when Jesus Christ shall come back. Chaotic. That was the picture it is. Two are going. We take one. The other disappear. The one that amazed me is a, a little boy that the father carried. And the little boy disappeared. Only the cloth of that boy was in the father's hand. And the pilot who was in the plane and suddenly the plane is left at the mercy of what? I pray. But for those that join him in the sky, are they seeing any chaotic life? Is triumphant as far as they are concerned. They are triumphantly catching up with the Lord Jesus Christ to go to heaven. It's only those that did not make it that will be seeing the chaotic life. In the last few five minutes, I want us to reflect on this. I've chosen to just, in some place, go completely outside of what is the outline so that we can bring it home to ourselves. Sunday school is to draw the lesson out of the topic and make amendment where it is required. Praise the Lord. Contribution, question, yes sir. Okay, my contribution is um, in, in very excellent um, teaching. Thank you, sir. Matthew 21 Verse 6 say, And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. So, from this um, scripture, I mean, from the triumphal entry, we see that Christ has come, but now he showed himself as a king. So, it was clear he has come as servant, he has shown some but now as a king. And you can see there, he said, They went and did as he commanded as them. He commanded. In the earlier part, he said, He said unto them, Go. But they saw it as a command. Uh, the word for all of us is that we must learn to, he's our father, he's our friend, he's our, but, but let's understand that he's our king and his instructions, his promptings in our spirits, his nudges, our commandments that we must obey and then we receive grace from him to obey and do as he do and then we'll get the glory that follows obedience. Thank you. If we have a king and the king gave us an instruction and we disobeyed the king, what do you think will happen? In the, in the secular, in the community, the king say, oh, you go and do this. And I say, me? I just walk away. In those days, it's death. There is no nothing, no questioning. You are going to die. Or disobeying the king. The disciples when they did exactly as the king asked them to do. Are we doing exactly what he asked us to do? More contribution or question? Yes sir. Ma. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I just want to draw attention to the court. To you the know? court. Okay. Yes. His time in that, in all the story was very brief. They brought it. Jesus Christ climbed on it. He used it and he set it aside. I just want to remind us that we should have, bear in mind that our time here on earth is, is limited. It's not infinite. Our time is limited. And um, the court was used for a specific purpose. 
And you know, when we are created, we come into this world, we come with a specific purpose. Bearing in mind that our time is short, I want to admonish us that if you have not discovered why God put you here on earth, you should quickly discover it. Mm. Because on that day, when we stand before him, nothing else matters. Mm. What will matter is what did you do with Jesus? The scroll that was given to you, the assignment that was given to you when you were coming to earth, was it fulfilled? What did you do with your neighbor? Did you love your neighbor? These are the things that will matter. Then secondly, when you talk about glory, the Bible says that God is the king of glory. In the Psalms, it says, open ye the gates that the king of glory may come in. Whatever glory we have, whatever we have, we think we have amassed, is God that has given it to us. And we should use it for his purpose. Hmm. I want to say that again, because Christians have forgotten a lot of things. God gives us wealth. He gives us influence. He gives us positions. And then we miss it. It always happens. It's always the same pattern. Thank you very much. Let's just bear in mind that whatever you have, God has given it to you. And your time is brief. Time There's is no short. more time to play around. It's time to get going. Can we bow our head and begin to reflect upon this lesson? It is a time for sober reflection. It is Easter time. Jesus Christ triumphantly entering Jerusalem. Are you expecting his coming? When he shall come, in what state will he meet you? In what state will he meet me? Will I be able to go with him triumphantly? Or will there be some log in my life that will weigh me down, that will weigh you down? Let's settle this with God. And pray that the mercy of God will be sufficient in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we'll pray. Amen. What a way of starting. I, I must tell us that, uh, to, you know, today is South South Day, and we have a way of doing things. Praise the Lord. One of the things you've seen is, is a part of it. And I pray that we, all of us, will be careful uh, to note the way God is speaking to us. God has already spoken to us this morning. My prayer is that we will listen to him in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Church Wado. Church Wado. South South Wado. Nigeria Wado. Hey. Kalaba Wado. Hey. Isoko Wado. Hey. Opwane Wado. Hey. Urobo Wado. Hey. Nigeria Wado. Hey. Boy is here, Wario. Hey. Oh. Praise the Lord. I, I want to formally welcome all of us to this great day. It's a day where a lot of things will happen. And uh, if we begin, can I hear amen? Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, let, let's begin by ushering in the people from South South. So if you know you are with us, please join us as we dance in. Praise the Lord. So let's welcome them. Irobo Wado! Irobo Wado! Hey! Hey! Wado! Cross River Wado! South South Wado! Where are the South South? Are we ready? Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. So I pass you a year before no bother. Hey! South South, we are not ready. If you are ready, let me hear you scream! 
Make some noise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In case you forgot, we are the South South. And we like it loud. I don't think anybody can convince me that David was not from South South. They say he danced in Rapafo. He must be from South South. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We have none but our very own Pastor Face Festus. And his team to wash us into the presence of God. Now that's how we do it in South South. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. No dull moment. It's a Jesus party. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, 
Somebody, you can lift your hands and worship him. One more time, you can scream very loud. Somebody, lift your voice and tell him thank you. Who is? Yes, who is? Who is? There's a song in Ninja Delta, Isoko, precisely that says, Mere Chiro Emmanuel. Mere Chiro Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, my God. Mere Chiro. The song says in English, let us glorify Emmanuel. Hey. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Hey. Emmanuel. Everybody. Again and of here, again and just follow me. Oh, Vie, no, Vie, ah, ah, da, do, 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 Niger Delta, I'm going to teach us this sound and we're going to raise it very loud to God. Very simple, you just say, Wofe, Wofe, Jiro, Wofe. Wofe, Wofe, Jiro. Can I hear the church raise it very loud? Wofe, Wofe, Jiro. Wofe. Just the drums sing wofe jiro wofe 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 jiro come on you can lift up your voice very loud to your father wofe jiro wofe come on you can do better 
better. Are you ready to raise it? Come on, come on, come on. Church this morning. South South to Ado. No, no, you're not in church. 
I don't see you yet. South, South, what do? Now this morning, we're going to start slowly. We're just going to enjoy God's presence. We're going to sing songs together, whether you are Niger Delta or not. Today, all of us, we are Niger Delta. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. It's a very simple song. Is that Emmanuel? Now, very simple song. When you respond with, that's your response. All right? Now, elegbete means a mighty God. Miyerue means I thank you. Somebody say, I thank you. So, can we sing it together now? Wait. Can I hear you? Huh? That's right. Come on, one more time. Come on, let's go. Come. Now if I sing your tribe, you will dance out as we celebrate Jesus together. Here go! Come on now! I'm 
Make it three now, three in a circle, three in a circle. Three in a circle. You will clap your hands today. Haha, <laughs> my God. Hey, okay, the men now. Three in a circle. Are you ready? Is your circle up to three? Is your circle up to three? Is your circle up to three? In Bini, you say Tobo. Are you ready? So when I say Tobo, you begin to clap. Are you ready? 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 Come on! 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 Somebody, are you shouting? <sighs> now, this one, as I sing this one, this one is for victorious people. You will live where you are, you will swing something in the air, and you will shout, Yeah! Are you ready? Imani Mere Kalena, Owa Wagu, Kogene Oberu. Some persons are still standing one place. It means a victorious shout. Uh -huh. You are a victor. You know how to behave as a victor. Uh -huh. Live where you are. Uh -huh. Walk around. Uh -huh. Switch something. Uh -huh. And shout to yeah. yeah. Somebody switch something. Yeah. Jump and shout to yeah. yeah. Somebody yeah. shout to yeah. 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 Are you ready now? Yeah. Give me space. Give me space. Give me space. Give me space, make I not enjoy you. He money made a barena, oh, wow, I could hear. Go get now, baby. Are you ready? Where could we hear? Where could we hear? Where could we hear? Go get now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where could we hear? Where could we hear? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where could we hear? Where could we hear? Go get now. Ah! 
our mothers. My God! My God! Who is ready to see our mothers dance? Hey! Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh yeah, chip, chip, tell it, chip, 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 tell it, 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 tell it,
Church, I say South South Wado. Uropo Wado. Ijo Wado. Edo Wado. Kalaba Wado. Rivers Wado. Ayama. Let me hear your hands. 
holding your hands, holding your hands, holding your hands. Daniel, go, 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 go. Kaka, 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 Jody, kaka, 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 ayah. Hey, 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 hey,
I say I feel like singing. Here we ask me why. Why, 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 why will you ask me if I say I feel like singing? And you are challenging me. What if I say I feel like dancing? Here we ask me why. I never hear you. What if I say I feel like clapping? If I say I feel like clapping, you will ask me why. I feel like running. I feel like running. If I say I feel like running, you will ask me why. Now hear this. God has done what no man can do. Can we go? God has done what no man can do for me. I will praise him. I will praise him in my way. What will we do? I will praise him in my own way. Instrumentalist. We are the sass out. We are the sass out. The Urobos, the Shakiri, the Ijoas, the Calabar, the Rivers, the Isokos, the Kuala. Let me see you. Thank 
to the youth choir and then uh, it will be followed by drama and then we will hear the message that will be taken by our father in the Lord, Reverend Asawata. This we follow in sequence so I don't need to come here once just chat. Praise the Lord. So can we put our hands together as we welcome the South South Choir, Youth Choir. Yeah. South South Wado. South South Wado. It's a Wado. It's a Wado. It's a Wado. My name is Ma Johnson Joy Ogenefego. I don't come here. Come exalt God's name for Isoko dialect. As you listen, God will bless you. Who for Basime Sereo? I'm here to, my name is Uso Victoria. I'm here to call the name of God in Ibibio language. You are blessed as you listen. Ogene no waro, agbaja guru, ogbe nyu tabaru, ome ome, ajotu voo, ogene maro, ogene kome, ogene yole, ogene ovo, ogene no bewene, ogene bede bede. O gaga o gene, isu o gene, awori o gene, o gene fego, o gene woma, o gene o gene karo, eno o gene, o ke o gene, ibo o vie i vie, agbada guru, agbada guru, o vie i vie, o vie i vie, ajira gene, jire, ajira gene, jire, ajira gene, jire. For Abasi Polo, Abasi Young, Abasi Song, Abasi Edisanga Spirit, Ekoke Ko Abasi, Edisanga Wo Abasi, Uyaya Abasi, Abasi Efrewo, Ufanima Abasi, Ekoke Ko Abasi, Sesong Wo Abasi Edion Fiedo. Thank <laughs> you. 
to focus to be able to get the message hallelujah hallelujah god bless you as you watch it amen
Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright. A man who fears God and shuns evil. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied. Have you not put an edge around him and his household and everything that he has? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a song today that exalts God. We want to call him our King of Kings. We want to exalt him for who he is. One of the ways to follow God wholeheartedly is to reverence him. Not only as a Savior, but as a Lord. His Lordship over us. As we follow God today and as we worship him, we pray that he accepts our worship. Amen.
Hallelujah. There's someone who has been blessed this morning. Shout a resounding hallelujah. Choir, God bless you richly in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's been a very wonderful, powerful praise and worship session. And you know that the South South people are power people. From the way they dance, the way they praise God. And uh, I used to think that the Arawa people are the most powerful people in Nigeria. But South South are the most powerful people. <laughs> Amen. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. I want to appreciate our Father in the Lord, Reverend Alex, who has willingly yielded this altar, hallowed altar to me this morning to come and minister. God bless you richly in Jesus' name. And all the pastorate, may the Lord bless you richly in Jesus' name. Amen. You know one thing I since I gave my life to Christ several years ago, I've enjoyed the privilege of being pastored by several people. But there's one common denominator that runs amongst all the people who have pastored me. When I was in the Deeper Life Church in Ajakuta, my pastor was a junior staff in my, uh, working under me. And he was younger than me. And you know such a relationship. And then when I came, I joined First Square Gospel Church in Magodo. My pastor was my, my beloved Aburo. He was younger than me. And Reverend Alex was my zonal superintendent. He was my son. My DO was my, my younger brother. My ZS was my son. But today, my DO, my pastor, is my son. My ZS is my very beloved son. And you know, the challenge is not to me. It's a privilege. I enjoy undue privilege. Those of you who are close to me, you will know how much privilege I enjoy from my beloved Aburo and from Reverend Alex. But the challenge is usually to them because of the culture of respect. When I step out of bounds, they find it difficult to correct me. But today, I want to tell you, Pastor Alex, don't be afraid. Uh, like uh, brother, our first brother said the other day, I'm going to be responsible. I will not exceed my time. Because I know if I exceed my time, you cannot take microphone from me. That would be disrespect to your father. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. Let someone shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Can you help me, Sister Grace?
that the South South has been so blessed by God. South South has been so helped by God. South South has been so favored by God. And you know, the wealth that sustains this nation for years is from South South. Even though the enemy tried to turn it into a resource cost, but God is still blessing South South. He's still favoring South South. He's still helping South South. And he's helping Nigeria. And therefore, I say, Urubo Wado. Hey. Isoko Wado. Hey. Shekiri Wado. Hey. Ija Wado. Hey. Edo Wado. Hey. Ibibio Wado. Hey. Ika Wado. Hey. Oza Wado. Hey. Efik Wado. Hey. And all the South South Wado. Hey. Yoruba Wado. Hey. Ibo Wado. Hey. Hey. Can you lift up your hands with me with God and just begin to worship God, begin to praise Him? He's here in our midst. He has helped us all. He has blessed us. He has favored us. We are what we are by the grace of God. Let's worship Him. Worship Him. Exalt Him. Glorify Him. Bless you, Lord. We appreciate you, Lord. We all know you, Lord. See how far you have helped us. See how far you have blessed us. See how far you have favored us. We are grateful. We are not ungrateful. We are not taking it in vain. And we say, Father, we are grateful. We honor you. We bless you. We appreciate you. We honor you, Lord. We reference you. Be thou exalted. Be thou glorified. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Brethren, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he has anointed me to preach the gospel. The gospel is good news. Good tidings. Good news. Good news to the sick is healing. Good news to the captive is freedom. Good news to the poor is wealth and riches. Prove it. And this morning, the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel, to speak the word, the word of deliverance, the word of healing. And if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. I want you to lift up your hands unto heaven. And as I release upon you power from God, Power from above. Power that is greater than other powers. As you receive now, receive deliverance. Receive deliverance from every negativity. Deliverance from poverty. Deliverance from sickness. Deliverance from captivity. Deliverance from bondage. Deliverance from all works of darkness. In the name of Jesus, in this house this morning, I decree and declare that upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and you will possess your possession. The house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Magodo Church shall possess her possession. And I decree this morning deliverance to everyone under any form of captivity in the name of Jesus. Children of God, God has different names. Names that are given to God by virtue of his attributes. Jehovah Mephalti is God our deliverer. Jehovah Ezra is God our helper from where Ebenezer comes from. Jehovah Rafaka is God our healer. Jehovah Ashib is God our restorer that restores what he did not take away from us. This morning, 
this God is in our midst in his mighty fold manifestation as a deliverer, as a helper, as a restorer, as a healer. And therefore, lift up your hands unto heaven. And by the power that is greater than all other power, I declare your deliverance from all works of darkness in the name of Jesus. Whatever followed you here that is not of God, I command a separation from you in the name of Jesus. You will not go back with them in the name of Jesus. For someone here this morning, receive your deliverance from all works of darkness, from every merry clay, from every horrible pit of life, from acts of witchcraft, sorcery, divination, enchantment, evil covenant, evil embargo, evil decrees, evil proclamations of the wicked. In the name of Jesus, receive your deliverance from enemies that is too strong for you. In the name of Jesus, receive your, receive your deliverance from stubborn challenges. In the name of Jesus, receive your deliverance from sickness, from disease, from infirmity. In the name of Jesus, receive your deliverance from barrenness. In the name of Jesus, I declare your deliverance from all evil foundations, from evil veils. In the name of Jesus, I declare your deliverance from forces and powers of delays delay in manifestation of answers to your prayers receive deliverance from them all in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus you have come to Mount Zion the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem the innumerable host of angels that are set to minister to you as a hero of salvation. You have come to the general assembly of God, the church of the living God, and the spirit of judgment made perfect. You have come to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. This morning, I decree and declare whatever is not planted by God in your life, I command them to bow in the name of Jesus. Whatever is not making for your peace, I command them to bow in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask that the power of God, the spirit of deliverance, of breakthrough, of miraculous manifestation, of answer prayers, rest upon you now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy means for evil in your life, meant for evil in your life, I ask that the God who is able to turn the God of divine miracle, who changes what the enemy means for evil for good, will turn them into double for honor, double for glory, double for blessing, double for prosperity, everlasting joy, and peace of God that passeth all understanding. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 66 verse 12 says, Thou hast caused men to ride upon us, and that you brought us unto a wealthy place. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, whatever you have passed through, whatever you are passing through, God is bringing you to your wealthy place, to your place of peace, for your place of peace, of shalom, of wholeness, of completeness, with nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing stolen, nothing spoiled in your life, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare an end to the wickedness of the wicked in the lives of the children of God in this assembly. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. There is what is called the miracle of divine exchange. In, Psalm, in Isaiah 61 verse 7, God said, for your shame, I will give you double. Whatever the enemy means to be for your shame, Whatever the enemy means for evil against you, God will turn it around and give you double for blessing, double for glory, double for honor, double for prosperity, everlasting joy, 
and peace of God that passes all understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare an end to every form of barrenness in this house. Spiritual barrenness, physical barrenness in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your hands once again. Receive power. Power of God. The Bible says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be thou lifted up, and ye everlasting doors, and let the King of glory come in. Children of God, Receive power. Amen. Isaiah 45 verse 1. It says that God anointed King Cyrus to open and empowered him to open doors that have been shut. And those doors will never be shut again. And I decree and declare with the power of God upon your life. Every door that the enemy has shut against you, shut against your family, shut against your business, shut against your job, your career, your ministry, your marriage, receive, declare, open now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus said to the deaf person, and he said, Ephata, open, Ephata, open. I'm going to begin to call upon some few things and I want you to shout a father. Doors to treasures of darkness and hidden riches in secret places. A father. Doors to financial breakthrough. A father. Doors to marital breakthrough. A father. Doors to manifestation of the fruit of the womb. A father. Doors to breakthrough in ministry. A father. Doors to break through in health, strength, and vitality. Ephata. Doors to break through in longevity. Ephata. Doors to all round blessing breakthrough. Ephata. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, brethren, before we take our seat. I'll just pray one more prophecy upon your lives. In November, I went to minister in a church in Aja. And the following month, the, the pastor called me. He said, my daddy, do you know that God blessed my church in an unusual manner? That a member of my church paid a tithe that has never been paid in the church, into the church. He talks of several millions. And I looked at it, I just said, one of things that, I mean, it can happen at any point in time. But in December, I went to minister in a church in Magboro. You know, Reverend Ilurimi Church. And I ministered and I prophesied some few things. The next month, he called me and said, Daddy, that in the, I think, what are 10 years or 15 years of their church, they have never had a tithe above 100,000. But in that month, after I ministered, he said, God visited them. A member paid a tithe of about 9 million or 8 million, thereabout. And I looked at it, I just said, it's one of these things, it can happen at any point in time. But in January, after the first service here, I went to a church, and I won't mention the church. I just went to prophesy. They didn't. They were not expecting me. I just came in, and they were surprised. I came in, and I prayed for them, and I prophesied on them. The following month in February, because I'm privy to the church account, and I saw a tide of about nine million naira thereabout, but that's not a big thing because in the church, the pastors pay. Uh, tithes in millions but the members have never paid tithe in millions but I saw what surprised me was that that tithe came through members of the church and I called the pastor 
I said, what happened? You had a breakthrough, a windfall in, this, in the month? I said, no, that is a member who paid a tithe, I think, of about 9 million naira into the account. And I said, at the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth shall be established. And if your amen can be loud enough, can you lift up your hands unto heaven? I am asking that the God with whom there is no variableness, neither any shadow of turning, in this month, in the next 30 days, we visit you. We visit your business. We visit your marriage. We visit your house. We visit all that's of concern of interest unto you. And we grant you an uncommon breakthrough. Uncommon breakthrough that will testify of itself. In the name of Jesus Christ, your church will know that you have received a breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We appreciate you. We honor you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, I commend, commit myself into your holy hands. All of you, none of me, Holy Spirit, anoint these lips of clay to speak forth your word in the next few minutes unto your children. Let the word bring healing. Let the word bring deliverance. Let the word bring comfort, edification, prosperity, peace, miracle, signs and wonders, strange house of God. And let it bring, O Lord, Father, Lord, wisdom and restoration of dignity to your children in the name of Jesus. Let your word take them from where they are to where they ought to be. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' precious and mighty name, I pray. Amen. In Jesus' miraculous name, I pray. Amen. In Jesus' wonderful name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Brethren, the Holy Spirit will help me. I'm going to speak to you on the team. Our team is follow Christ wholeheartedly. And I'm just going to speak to you briefly on a topic I call following Christ wholeheartedly results in the greatest wealth in life. The greatest wealth in life. Brethren, the greatest wealth in life is not money. It's not finances or material things. But the greatest wealth in life is Relationships, associations, association, godly relationship, godly association. But of all the relationships, as powerful as relationships are, the most beneficial, the most powerful relationship is an intimate relationship with the most high God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. In Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor seated in the seat of a sinner, nor standeth in the path of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of his law, of the Lord. And in the Lord does he meditate day and night. In that scripture, it is association with confession. The blessed man is as a result of his association and his association affects his confession. After today's service, please be mindful of who you are associating with because it's not every association that is beneficial. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm going to quickly talk about seven levels of relationship with God. There are seven levels of relationship. As you are seated here this morning, every one of you are at one level of relationship or the other within the seven realms. And number one of them is what I call the slave realm. Slave to the God of this world. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. Number two is the teenage sons of God, which the Greek call technon, or convert, or a lamb. Number three is matured sons of God, which is called also the heos 
or disciple or sheep. You understand this later. Number four is the servant sounds of God. And number five are the friends of God. Number six is what you call the covenantees of God. Number seven are what is called the favorites of God. It's in an ascending order of importance, of strength. Right from number one to number seven. At the end of this message, I want you to ask your spouse if you are married with all sincerity because he will know what level are you on. Are you on number one or you're on number seven? Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Children of God, in the beginning, the Bible tells us that God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And when he came to verse 26, he said, let us, after he created all things, he said, let us create man in our image and after our likeness. And the Bible said, God created man. And in verse 31, the Bible said, everything created by God, he found that was very good, which means man was very good. And in Genesis chapter 5, verse 12, for verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, this is the book of the generation of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God, made he him, male and female, created he them, and he blessed them, and called their name Adam, in the day when they were created. Adam was the first begotten son of God. The first person God ever created was called Adam. He was male and female. They were one. And he called their name Adam. And if you, list, if you look at the list of what I spoke of, number one to seven, Adam was Adam that was created by God was a Jewish. You'll find out later on when we get on. Thus, the man that God created in Genesis 1 was the first son of God, and his name was Adam. But the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, that Adam committed high treason against God, and he died spiritually. And that resulted in his falling from the status of a son of God to the status of of a slave to the devil that is here to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And children of God, since that time, everyone that was born into this world, from that time unto this day, was born with that deficiency of Adam as a slave to the adversary that is here to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Children of God, because God is not interested in slaves. God is not interested in servants. But God is interested in sons. He created sons. And therefore, he was not happy. And he therefore put into motion what he called the plan of salvation. And in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, the Bible tells us that God told the adversary that is here to steal, to kill, and to destroy, who made man to fall and became the God of this world. He said that I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And it shall bruise your head and it shall, he, you shall bruise his heel. Children of God, the Bible tells us several years later, thousands of years later, in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says when the fullness of time was come, God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to come into the world who was born of a woman, to come into the world and redeem them that were under the cause. Can you please push Genesis, sorry, Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 4 in, 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 into the screen. F sorry, verse 4, 5, and 6, and 7. I want us to read it together. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive 
adoption of son. And because ye are son, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Verse 7 says, Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ Jesus. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. Bible scholars will tell you that when in Genesis, in John chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the same was in the world. And he said, all things were created by him. Without him was nothing created that was created. In verse 12, the Bible says, verse 10, it says he came to his own. But his own received it none. But in verse 12, he said that as many as received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. From slavery to the sons of God. From slavery to the adversary that is here to steal, to kill, and destroy, to become the sons of God. So, children of God, the son of God mentioned in John chapter 1 verse 12 is the word called, he used, sorry, technon. There are four words, Greek words for son. There's a word called nepus, which is spiritual infants. God is not interested in them. There is paidon, spiritual children. God is not interested in them. But there is what you call technon, that is spiritual teenagers. Another word for them is like the Lamb of God. Another word for them are converts. And then the fourth word is use. That's what God is interested in. Matured sons of God. They are sheep of God. Disciples of God. Children of God. The word in John chapter 1 verse 12 is technon. Power to become sons of God. Teenage sons of God. God adopts you into his family by grace. And he gives you power to become sons of God. But before you can become what God is interested in, which is he was mature sons of God. The sheep of God. Those who hear his voice and he knows them. And he says in John chapter 10 verse 27 to 30. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. And no one shall be able to pluck them out of my hands. Because my father that gave them to me is greater than all. And no one shall be able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Because I and my father are one. That man in that scripture is huge. Is a son of God. Mature son of God. Who have grown. Grown to become matured. It's not technon. In John 1, 12, the man that receives the power to become sons of God, that son is called technon. So when you come to God as a child of God, as you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the first thing you have to do, you have to understand that you have to grow. Grow, grow by grace. Receive grace to grow and become a child of a son of God, he is matured, matured in every arena of life. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Let someone shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. So children of God from slave status, the lowest of them all, to technon, spiritual infants, spiritual teenagers. That is what you become when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But God is not interested in slaves. He's not so much interested in technon. Because technons are not so useful to God. God is interested in who he is. God has so much deposited in us all. Potential. Capped capability. Hidden talent. Untapped strength. 
dormant ability inside of us that can only come to manifestation through growth. And therefore, God wants you to grow. He wants you to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And therefore, when you come to become a child of God by grace, for by grace are you saved through faith. It is not of works, lest any man should boast. You need to grow. It is only he wish. It is only mature sons of God that hear the voice of God. It is only the sheep of God, mature sons of God, that hear the voice of God. Not everyone hears the voice of God. There used to be a controversy, I don't know if it still exists today, about eternal salvation or no eternal salvation. Some people tell you that once you have given your life to Christ Jesus, you are safe forever. Another said, no, it is not true. All these are Bible scholars. Some of them will hinge on what Jesus Christ said in John chapter 10, verse 27 to 30. But what they don't understand, both of them are right in one way or the other. That the people who Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. Eternal life means everlasting life. It doesn't die. And they shall not perish. They are mature sons of God. If you look at the scripture, it is not the same word, Greek word for son. It was this hewis that was used there, not technon. But technon are people who can turn back. He always cannot turn back. There's a level you get to in Christ Jesus that nothing, no tribulation, no trial, no affliction, no temptation, no peril, no, nothing can make you to turn back. Nothing can take you away from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. And that is he wish maturity. But God is not just also interested in your being a mature sons of God. He wants you to grow further, to become a serving son of God. Because of brevity of time, I can't go into details about all this, but I'll just tell you that, look, God is interested in your growing. Technon will take you to heaven. Once you give your life to Christ Jesus, yes, you are a candidate for heaven. But there's so much in you that God has deposited in you that can only come out through your growth to become what God has proposed you to be. So you need to grow from technon and become hues. Grow from lamb to become a sheep. Grow from being a new convert to become a disciple. Grow to become a mature son of God from a baby Christian. God is not only interested in your becoming just a mature son of God. God also wants you to be a serving son of God. God created all things according to Colossians 1.16 and according to Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. He says that he created all things both animate or inanimate, visible or invisible, dominion, power, mind, principalities. He created all things for his pleasure. They have to serve him. Isaiah 43 verse 21 says, These people were created by me and they are to praise me. They are to serve me. God wants you to serve him. He created you for a purpose. There are specific things that God has created you in this world to come and fulfill. And it's not for you to just look good. But for you to make the world a better place, for you to make the kingdom of God to become what God has proposed it to be. And beyond being a serving son of God, God wants you to be his friend. Every child of God, God wants to be his friend. He takes pleasure in your becoming his friend. Children of God,
in my sheep hear my voice and I know them I heard of a story several years ago of some cattle rustlers who went into a village they were rustling cattle uh, sheep everything and they took so many there was this old woman poor old woman all she had was about 10 sheep not even cows and they came and picked the ten of them. And they went into the bush, into the forest. And the woman broke down and began to cry to God to help her to recover, restore her stolen sheep. And the story had it that in the course of moving, soldiers accosted them and killed the cattle thieves. And they recovered all the cattle all the cows, all the cows, everything. And they took them to a police station. And the woman was told that the cattle have been found. And he can go and pick her cattle. Actually, the news went around that everyone whose cattle has been stolen should come to the police station and collect their cattle. If you have evidence. And the woman came to the police station, told the DPO, my tank cattle's Sheep are in your uh, police station. The people will say, give me evidence. He said, but I know them. He said, yes, what is the evidence? What mark do you have on them? She said, it doesn't have any mark on them. But I know them. And they will follow me. After arguing and arguing, the, the, the man said, okay, tell me which are your cattle. And he just made a sound. Phew! And the moment he made that sound, about ten cattle, sheep, ran out, proved, and followed her. After the time followed, five others also came along. And the police officer asked that, I thought you said it's ten that you had. And he said, yes, it's ten. But he doesn't know why these five followed. But that woman prayed for restoration. And when God restores, he restores with compensation. And that woman went home with 15 sheep not ten sheep. And I pray for every one of you here this morning. Whosoever the adversary has stolen anything from, anointing power for restoration, Jehovah El Hashim will restore back unto you in the name of Jesus at a high level of glory, qualitatively and quantitatively in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So children of God, God wants you to be his friend. And then God also wants you Beyond being his friend, there are some special friends which are called covenanted children of God. He wants you to be his covenanted child. The Bible tells us that in Psalm 50, verse 5 and 15, that it says, Gather unto me my sins that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, and you will call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you. There are special children of God, who oh, beyond being friends of God, beyond being mature sons of God, beyond being friends of God, they are covenantees of God. And there are also a higher level, which are the favorites of God. Children of God, God is a sovereign God. Psalm 115 says that he dwells, to, he dwells in heaven and he dwells all that pleases him. There are some people God chooses a special uh, um, uh, favorite of him and may you receive grace to be a favorite of God in the mighty name of Jesus receive grace to be a son of God receive grace to be a, a mature son of God receive grace to become a friend of God and receive grace to become a covenantee of God and to become a favorite of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ before I round our children of God one of the greatest benefits of being a mature son of God, of being a friend of God, of being a covenantee of God, is the ability to hear God. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one shall be able to pluck them out of my hands. Ability to hear the voice of God. Children of God, 
It places you in a position to be able to be more useful to God. It places you in a position of influence. I remember a story several years ago. There's a man called Moses. Moses was a third generation slave in Louisiana in the USA. He was a favorite of his master, the slave owner. And Moses, over the period in time, had learned to read and write. He had learned to read the Bible. He had learned to be a Sunday school teacher. They gathered themselves and he became a little pastor amongst the slaves in that plantation. And he was a favorite of his master. Every time the master is going out for um, hunting, duck hunting, duck uh, wild birds in the bush, they go out to hunt, he would take Moses along. And one day, Moses was going along with him in the bush, in the forest, and the master told him and called him and said, Moses, I can see you are doing very well for yourself. You have learned to read and write. You read the Bible. You teach the Bible. And you pray. But what I can't understand is that there seems to be so much trouble following you. Every time there's one problem or the other, somebody is sick amongst you, you are having this challenge or the other. Why? I don't go to church. I only go to church on Thanksgiving Day or maybe Christmas Day. But all the problems you are having, I don't have. Why, Moses? Why are you having so much trouble? And Moses said, Master, I don't know. But I will ask him. He said, who? He said, I'll ask my father. And the man laughed and just took at Moses that's me, a stupid person. But when they were going back, and Moses now told the master, I say, master, do you know my father told me the answer to the question you asked me earlier? The man said, I'm all ears. He said, God said, do you know of all the geese, all the ducks we are hunting, there are only two types. The ones we have killed, you know, when they go out, they take the gun, they shoot, woo, woo, and the ducks fall, they die, and they leave them. At the end of it, they run after the ones that are still alive. At the end, they come back and begin to gather all those that are dead. And he told him that God told me, that you and your people, you are the dead dick, uh, geese. But I and my people, because we are alive, we are running away from the devil. That's why we are having so much challenges. He said, Master, you are dead. And your people are dead. And that's why the devil is not troubling you. Do you know that changed the man's spiritual life? And he went back. And he later on, the story said he became a pastor. And therefore, I want to talk to every one of you who are looking at me this morning. If you see any of your brother, brethren having challenges, issues, don't look at them with your sanctimonious eyes and say, maybe they are not right with God. But it's just because they are still alive and they are running away from the devil. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. Several years ago, I was working as a roundup. I was working in a private company. I was the CEO of the company. And you know, some of the things have happened in corporate organizations as such that there are what you call opportunistic uh, privileges that you have by virtue of you know someone here or someone knows somebody here. And in that industry, um, there are things that come and you, you key into it. It makes you millions of naira as profit. Uh, it, was, it was a chemical industry and there was the most powerful, the biggest uh, chemical industry in Nigeria, marketer in Nigeria, multinational. The marketing director came to my company and told us, please, he gave us a paper, you can go and pay for 10,000 tons of this particular chemical. 
and um, you take it. It's like somebody telling you maybe Amber Day, sorry, not Amber Day, um, Sanwolu, giving you a piece of paper and say, go to Lake Rice and collect 100,000 bags of Lake Rice at 10,000 Naira per bag. You already become a billionaire, isn't it? Because even if you sell at 50,000, you are still a billionaire. And he gave that paper. It does happen now and then. And just preferential something. And we ask you, go and buy at a preferential price. And the management of the company, we are happy. Oh, wow, we're going to buy. And I'm the CEO. And we're supposed to take money from the bank to on overdraft because we did not have the cash to pay for it. And we're excited. The following day, we're supposed to send the check to the to them. In the night, the Lord spoke to me. Say, don't put your hand in that transaction. And I woke up and I said, how am I going to do this? And I went to the, the factory and I told them, sorry, we are not going to buy that item. And they couldn't understand. They said, have I gone crazy? The only person who can overrule me then was the chairman of the company. And he was not in Nigeria. And they couldn't reach him. And he needed to also be able to sign. And I refused to sign because I knew the voice that I had. And they felt that I was going to put myself into trouble with the chairman. We declined. A week later, there was a change in policy. Suddenly. And what was supposed to make millions, I mean, I'm when I talk of millions now, I'm talking of in dollars. Will have made, because those days, would have made millions in dollars for us. What was supposed to make millions for us in dollars? If we had bought it, we had lost millions. And that would have placed the company in a terrible position. Children of God, it pays to hear God. And I round up by praying for you this morning. That the grace to hear God, if your amen can be loud enough, Receive in the name of Jesus. Amen. The grace to be a sheep of God. The grace to be a mature child of God. The grace to be yours. The grace to be a friend of God. The grace to be a covenantee of God. Receive now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Grace to hear the voice of God. The Bible says in Romans 8, 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. Grace to hear the voice of God with all clarity, with no equivocation, no ambivalence, no ambiguity. Receive in the name of Jesus. Grace to be led by God through the witnessing of the Holy Spirit to your spirit man. To be led by God through the still small voice of a human conscience. To be led by God through the audible voice of God. To be led by God through revelatory, inspirational, directional, futuristic, prophetic, warning dreams, visions of the night, open visions, received in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace to be led by God through the manifestation of the revelatory gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discernment of the spirit, of prophecy, of interpretation of tongue. Receive now in the name of Jesus. Grace to be led by God through guiding scripture. The word of God will be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Receive now in the name of Jesus. Grace to be led by God through Guiding men and women that God has placed in your life. Receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace to be led by God through geophonic manifestation, angelic ministration. Receive now in the name of Jesus. Grace to be led by God through manifestation of divine wisdom. Children of God, there are four types of wisdom. 
There is intellectual wisdom. There is natural wisdom. There is the wisdom of the devil. But there is divine wisdom. It's the highest wisdom of all. The wisdom that enables you to take decisions that will not bring regrets. That will take decisions that will bring increase and not decrease. Receive now in the name of Jesus. And grace to be led by God through peace. The Bible says in Psalm 85 verse 8 that my, my peace Psalm 85 verse 8 Can you please place it on the board? It's escaped my memory. I will hear what the Lord God will speak. For the Lord God will speak peace unto his saints and to his people. Let them not go back again to their folly. Receive grace to be led by peace. In the name of Jesus. God will order your steps in peace. Shalom, wholeness, completeness. With nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing stolen, nothing spoiled in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Children of God, whether you are a covenantee of God, whether you are a favorite of God, or covenantee of God, or a friend of God, or a servant of God, or a matured son of God, Hughes, or a teenage son of God, Technon, it all starts with grace. The grace that takes you from slavery into the kingdom of God. There is one God and one mediator between man and God. His name is called Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no one, no one can take you to the Father except Jesus Christ. Every head bows and eyes closed. If you are here in this house this morning and you're saying, Pastor, I want today to be a turning point in my life. I want to surrender myself to Jesus Christ. I want to take that decision to become a son of God, to leave slavery to the adversary, to become a son of God, and to become to grow and grow and become a friend of God, a favorite of God. Wherever you are, can you please lift up your hands unto heaven and let me pray for you. Thank God for that hand lifted up. Thank God for those hands lifted up. Thank God for those hands lifted up. Thank God for those hands lifted up. Can you please just stand up so that I can pray for you? Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Today is a turning point in your life. Stand up on your feet. Can you just step into the front here and I pray for you personally? Please come to the front here. And stretch your hands towards me. And repeat after me. I say, Lord Jesus, I come to you the way I am. I believe in my heart that you are the son of God. That you came to the world to die for my sin. And on the top day, you rose up for my justification. Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Be my Lord and my Savior. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, you said everyone that calleth upon your name shall not be put to shame. Therefore, Father, I commit these your children into your holy hands. And I'm asking, O Lord, Father, that you will let them never be put to shame again forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Forgive them their sins. Be their Lord and their Savior in the name of Jesus Christ. Write their name in the book of life. And from this day onward, give them power to become sons of God. Give them grace to grow and become mature sons of God and become serving sons of God and become friends of God and become covenantees of God and become your favorite in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for answer prayers. Glory and honor be unto your holy name for in Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen. For the rest of the church, lift up your hands unto heaven as I decree and declare, I release you into a week of uncommon blessing, 
uncommon favor, exceeding great grace of God in the name of Jesus Christ. All the prophetic declarations this morning upon your life will come to manifestation in the name of Jesus Christ. I release you to a season of jubilation, celebration, congratulation of open heavens for manifestation of days of heaven here on earth in the name of Jesus Christ. Days of restoration, of recovery, of revival, of revelation, of rest and peace in Christ Jesus, of recompensing of fire judgment against enemies of God in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Grace of love of remembrance and redemption of all the seeds you are sown into God's kingdom. In the name of Jesus. A manifestation of the harvest. And you're stepping from one harvest to another harvest. In the name of Jesus. Days of redemption from all works of darkness and return to the stronghold of Jesus Christ. Stronghold of peace, of shalom, of wholeness, of completeness with nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing stolen, nothing spoiled in your life in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that your lives will proceed, will progress and end according to the plan of God, according to the thoughts of God, which are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And according to the highest wish of God, that you will prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper according to the prophecies of God and verdict of God and not according to the plan of the adversary in the name of Jesus may the Lord do a quick walk in righteousness in your life by satisfying you early by his mercy that you may rejoice in him all the days of your appointed time in the mighty name of Jesus may the Lord turn whatever the enemy have meant for evil against you into double for honor double for glory double for blessing, double for prosperity and everlasting joy in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy upon the north wind of abundance and copious blessing, the south wind of restoration and divine supernatural supply, west wind of replenishment to blow fresh grace, fresh favor, fresh prosperity upon your businesses, upon your jobs, your careers, your marriages, your homes, your families in the name of Jesus. And I prophesy the east wind of judgment to blow upon all your adversaries in the name of Jesus and in capacitate them, make it impossible for them to trouble you, henceforth in the mighty name of Jesus in the name of Jesus you may not see the wind nor see the rain, but your valleys shall be filled with water because we serve a miracle working God with whom there is nothing difficult, nothing impossible in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you Father for answer prayers for in Jesus Precious and mighty name, we pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. I hope I was not irresponsible. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stretch forth, let's stretch forth our hands. Atin fi aye ba gbogbo oni ruru ede lati yin oba awon oba ni ede ti oni kalukun so akori yo wa ye ni pade don yo bere ni dede ago mejo aro 8a ara ore ojulumo papa gbogbo eni ti nwa ona abayo etete to jesu wa ko le se ase pe ise ninu aye gbogbo wa olorun ti o ngbala ti o nwosan nla nsoro nipa re jesu okan lana okan loni okan titi aye raye ami hi 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 this is the matter we mention the matter change you are invited for educational program which is coming up on the 14th of April, 2024, and it starts by 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. The program will be planned by the Federal Ministry of Health Service, which is available. It will be a life changing experience. We are announcing much of the family planning, where you go to the nursing of the festive family, and you are going to have better understanding of how to live your life in the family. Please come on, come on. It's going to be exclusive and it's going to be powerful. Don't miss it. It's going to be a life changing event, impactful. Wonderful, beautiful, you're welcome. I'm inviting you for the program. I'm inviting you for the program. 
The location is First Hall Gospel Church, number 24, one day I did not want straight and look there Christian. Thank you. Do we have um, VIPs, visiting us for the first time? If you know today is your first time, can you find by raising your hands? Thank you. Please let's welcome them. Sorry, you can stand up by bringing your bags to the. Especially for you, and we welcome you with the love of Jesus. Multimedia. This is Four Square Gospel Church, Magodo, Lagos, Nigeria. We are also known as a people of power in Four Square Gospel Church, Nigeria. Another part of the world, we propagate the fourfold ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Savior, as symbolized by the cross. Jesus Christ, the baptizer with the Holy Spirit, as symbolized by the dove. Jesus Christ, the healer, as symbolized by the cup. Jesus Christ, the soon coming king, as symbolized by the crown. The first three have been fulfilled and are still being fulfilled. We await his return. In Four Square Gospel Church, Makodo, we have three covenants that works for us. The covenant of life. We shall not bury anyone before his or her time. This is according to Psalms 118 verse 17 and Psalms 91 verse 16. The covenant of increase. If you come here small, you will become big. And if you come here already big, you shall become bigger. This is according to Job chapter 8 verse 7. Psalm 67 verse 6, Psalm 115 verse 14 to 15, Psalms 92 verse 12. The covenant of divine provision. We shall not borrow, launch, or pledge, because the Lord shall provide all our needs according to his riches in glory. This is according to Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 and Deuteronomy chapter 28, 12 to 13. A bag with a data card inside has been given to you kindly fill in your details, your correct address and the name you are called at home. We would like to visit you and continue to pray for you and with you. These covenant will work for you in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Kindly watch out for the following announcement. Cleanliness is next to godliness. The beautification and sanitation department of the Four Square Gospel Church Magodo wishes to bring to your attention the need to respect our place of worship and play your part in keeping it clean as a mark of godly reverence. To this effect, the following rules apply and should be followed as your act of obedience to our Lord. Desist from dropping litter on the floor in any area of the church and the adjoining street. Use the bins around you as well as the plastic bottles bin outside the church. All parents are to assist their children's litter. The toilets must be flushed and kept clean after use. There should be no wetting of the toilet seat, no standing on the seat and no spilling of urine or water on the floor. Any spillage must be cleaned before leaving. Sanitary pads tissues and other items 
must be disposed of in the bins. Wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water after using the toilets. When you do so, you must not spill water on the floor. Little children must be accompanied by older ones, a teacher or a parent. Worship Center etiquette guidelines have been placed in all our toilets. Kindly observe and obey them. Remember, all these rules apply every day of the week as well as before, during and after services. May the Lord find you obedient in keeping his house clean, sacred, safe and beautiful for fellowship. May he reward you for your obedience in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we rise as we take our memory verse? Okay, our memory verse is taken from the book of Psalm 119, verse 105. It says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, and so shall it be for us in the name of Jesus. All right, before we take our offering, sorry, let's sit down. Just have little thing we want to do. Okay, yesterday, how many of us were around yesterday? How many of us? If your neighbor is not around, tell your neighbor you miss. Tell your neighbor you miss. All right, we had a lot of fun yesterday. And where we have our two daddies, play table tennis, our daddy Aswata and our daddy Hobson. Please, let's give them Bosa two times. Bosa, Bosa, Bosa. Our daddy, they are good. Sure, they are strong. Please, if you need, uh, if you have um, people that want to play table tennis outside, please come and call our daddies. They will, <laughs> they will actually, they are good. Our daddies are really, really good. Our daddies are really. Okay, that is the highlight of what was happening yesterday. You can say our daddies in short. No one wants to like grief for anyone. Like both of them were just the battles. We're just back to back, and they did awesomely well. Our daddy did awesomely well. In doing this, I will need our daddy, Gay Day, to come in helping to present the gifts to a little token we have for them. Daddy, Gay Day, sir. Please let's laugh at her daddy as he comes up. Okay. All right. 
they are actually both winners like they are actually both winners seriously <laughs> the battle was really tough but at the end they both win the um, table tennis so we'll call our daddy aswata to come up as our daddy Daddy, congratulations for the strength of the Lord that is in you to be playing tennis at your age. His grace that is to be envied. And on behalf of the South-South Zone of Magodo Church, I present this to you as a mark of honor and appreciation of the grace of God in your life. God bless and strengthen you the more, sir. In Jesus' name. Yes, Daddy, beyond this gift, we appreciate the grace of God in your life. The strength to play tennis at your age is something we covet beyond every other thing. The Lord will continue to strengthen you and uphold you. You will be strong enough to play again next year and many more years to come in Jesus' name. The entire South South appreciates you. God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Um, sorry, I'm asked to do a little highlight on the announcement. We said yes, um, educational ministry has organized a program, an outreach program, which comes up on the 14th of April. Um, let's plan to attend. Then there will be all my life fellowship, please, 6 p.m. Let's attend to. Then there will be Sunday school workers preview online, Tuesday, 26th. It's um, via Zoom, 8 to 9 p.m. Then International Monthly continues. The last one is for our Yoruba people. Yoruba people, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, they are not around. Thank you. Uh, we are still in our week, so we can greet you in any form. Thank you. <laughs> All right. It still continues um, Wednesday down to Sunday. Please, let's be available and celebrate. Um, Holy, um, Holy Spirit refreshing video comes on um, Friday, 29th of March at um, Idimo. The theme is, it is finished. And I pray that every situation in our life will be finished in Jesus' name. Then the International Conference for Ministers and Leaders, ICML, comes up um, on the 8th to 13th of April, 2024, at Ajibo Camp. Um, that's just the highlights for the announcement. Now let's raise up our offerings. And if you are doing a transfer, the account number has been displayed. Let's lift up and speak into that seed we are holding. That the seed we yield faults and increase and it will come to God as a sweet many server that the Holy Spirit will accept it in the name of Jesus and for those that don't have to give that God will make a way for them in Jesus name Father we thank you and we lift up the little substance we have into your hands we ask Lord God that you accept it in Jesus name we ask Lord that Father those that don't have we ask that you provide for them in Jesus name and we have Lord God that by next time we'll be given we'll give more to you in Jesus name for in Jesus name we have prayed Ose mudi ame Ole zele no feye mume Cha cha Jesu no ge mudi ani mefo Oha mudi anori a ojiri Ose mudi ame Ole zele no feye mume Cha Jesu no ge mudi ani mefo Oh, Amuria Noria, oh, the Kai, oh, Ide, oh, Ide, oh, no, Samudia, me, oh, Ide, 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 oh
Thanksgiving. It's time for Thanksgiving of the South South. And the way we will do it is like this. The South South people will go to the back and render one of their special, so many of their special songs. Like what have been said, what have been preached, you can see the energy. Let me just tell you something coincidentally. I don't know the time. I, I if it were to be the time that uh, one is getting PR, I suppose to have been given PR with the South South people, because I, when I'm uh, growing up, I just saw that I, I'm among the South South people right from childhood. Only for me to stay there for more than 25 years, I brought all my children there. I can let go my wife there. Praise the Lord. She's not uh, South South, too, but she, she went to South South and I met her there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we have your songs? You are supposed to be lifting up something and swinging it. 
when we are going back now. Before we pray, let me just tell you something that I saw yesterday here in our church here. Before you see those people playing table tennis, by the way, you might not understand what Brother Egede was saying. They are well above 70. Those people playing table tennis, can we clap for them? God is renewed them like the eagles. Amen. You see, these are people that they are very creative. They are very creative. They are very, look, I, I came, I was there yesterday when I saw under the canopy and the chair they even rented. People that filled the place, there were so many, and they were even, even be able to speak the word of God unto them. It's evangelistic. That game was evangelistic. And because I, I decided not to uh, show myself too much so that they will not say, ah, ah, this one, and you are the pastor in charge. Uh, are you South South? Are you. Uh, I don't want to be seen to be biased. That's why I say no, but I was watching. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brethren, that's the way to go. They are very creative. Don't think what we are doing here is every year we are doing a ritual. No. What I want us to do as leaders of this team, be thinking of creative. In fact, we attended one training of recent this week that is just ending. They call it innovation, innovative thinking. It's more than creative thinking. So, South South, we are very innovative. God will bless you, Jesus. Name. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father in heaven, once again, we call on your name. You know these South South people. These are people that are very, very innovative. And they are very, very creative. These are the people God has endowed and God has endued them with grace. Our Lord and our God will call on your name. You know them more than we do. Holy Spirit of God, enlarge their coast. Bless them beyond their imagination. All the resources they've used, even to prosper your kingdom. God, replace it for them in multiple fold in the name of Jesus. Amen. South, South people, come next year. None of you will be missing. Amen. None of us will be missing. Amen. Nothing missing. Amen. Nothing broken. Amen. Nothing stolen. Amen. Nothing spoiled. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for you as on today. You will be healthier. You'll be more financially stable. Amen. You'll be more blessed. Amen. You'll be more fruitful. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will look back, you will glorify God. Amen. God of heaven will meet your need. Amen. As you are serving the Lord faithfully and wholeheartedly, God will meet your need. Amen. Benefit of serving him wholeheartedly, God will grant unto you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord keep you. Amen. The Lord sustain you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. The Lord give you peace. Peace at home. Peace at work. Peace in everywhere you go. Once again, better, elder, more enlarged, more joyous, more sustained. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. You and the seed God has given unto you, you will serve God better. You have put your hand on the plow none of you will look back. Amen. So shall it be. You will make heaven. You will make heaven. You will not be distracted. So shall it be. The innovation God has granted unto you, I, we pray for you. God will increase you. In the name of Jesus. Your land will be flowing with milk and honey. And I pray for you. Ah, that area that the enemy thought they have stolen from you, God will restore them back to you in the name of Jesus. Niger Delta, you'll be joyous Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will restore you. Amen. God will restore you. Amen. 
in the name of Jesus. Ah, so shall it be. Thank you for doing it. For in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen and amen. Well, come sing again. Jesus, Jesus, do na na na. Jesus, Jesus, do. 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 South, South, we chiro ye. Jesus, Jesus, do. South, South. Oge no kori kori yo. Aboro. Kip 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 South South Wado. Hallelujah. Please let's put our hands together for Jesus. Honestly, it has been an awesome time in the presence of God. Honestly, honestly, it has been an awesome time. You know, I, I don't want to emphasize or emphasize yesterday's uh, love feast and table tennis. It was awesome. Daddy God blesses us. Daddy God blesses us. It was yesterday I understand that. Don't over. <laughs> don't look down on anointing, though. <laughs> anointing is for her. <laughs> so yesterday I know that honestly, one of our daddies one with anointing. I don't to call him. <laughs> but it was awesome. So I want to, I want to start by appreciating the pastorate. Thank you, sir. Daddy, God bless you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. It was indeed a privilege, honestly. And I want to thank the whole South South members. God bless us in Jesus' name. Let's clap for ourselves. You know, all the whole planning, we were doing our own planning online. We we're not meeting. It was only online. <laughs> we just sent the message and we respond. I sent the message and we respond. And when we asked to meet, they all came around and we met. And honestly, it was, it has been indeed a glorious day. And I want to give thanks to God for everything. And I know that. God will continue to bless every single one of us, honestly. God will bless every single one of us. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I pray that the reason why this, this program was better, that that reason will continue to be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless us in Jesus' name. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Are we tired of clapping for Jesus? Our God is good. You know, the best dancer in the Bible, they say, they say, oh, because I'm still searching the scripture to know the verse where they said David is from South South. I'm still searching. I'm still searching the scripture. Maybe when I get the verse, I, I will say it. But let's clap for South South. I want to thank God for. Where is uh, Pastor Festus? They are going to be? Okay. I saw him last in August when my cousin's wife, my cousin's daughter, was uh, getting married. And he was also the one that came there to perform at Lekki. Let's clap for him. The Lord will continue to renew him, his ministry, and his team in Jesus' name. So the South South has performed very well, at least with the innovation that came into it, though I wasn't here on yesterday, during when, when our two daddies were, you know, displaying. Yes. In fact, daddy himself confessed that you know how to play more than him. But he's, he's, he was on the mountain for one week. <laughs> and that's why he was able to, you know, at the last minute. But both of you did very well. Let's clap for them again. But for the innovation to be complete, let the younger ones also learn from our daddies. You know, it will have been more better that maybe before our daddies, who are the main, come up, then the younger ones at least to do the opening ceremony, Abby. So youth in the house, please oh, take note. Mm? Take note, if our daddies that are well over 70, both of them, they are well over 70, they can, you know, and then the youths are sitting down watching them. I don't, I think that is a misnomer. Please, please, let's, let's wake up. I remember in those days when we go to camp, uh, our daddy of blessed memory, I wake up by... 4 a.m. or thereabout or 5 to go and wash his car. And then I will be passing the youth sleeping in the... Before we finish washing the car, and then we go and do our run. Eh? We move from the building to the main gate twice. And then we we'll still be sleeping. It's not good. Though you may not like it, but that is the truth. Our daddies are able... You see the way they are looking. At their age, they are very fresh because they exercise the body. So I please, I encourage our youths, let's brace up. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So when we have such, such uh, events like that, the, the youths, just like the Pastor Festus and his team, you know his boy. You know he did all the... Then to round up now, Pastor Festus came up, Abby. That's how it should be. It shouldn't be the one that will start from beginning and to the end. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So, on this note, I want to thank the organizing committee of the South South. You know, South South is the part of Nigeria where the number of languages are almost equal to the number of the people. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. As you have sung for the Lord, you also sing in heaven in the name of Jesus. So I also use the opportunity also to thank every one of you for your prayers towards the completion of our Father's house. People are praying. I think there is virtually any 
prayer program I attend that it doesn't come up, you know? We pray. At least a team that have been praying for the past two weeks and each of the prayer leaders, they raise it. You may look at it to be ordinary, but the speed for completion, the Lord will grant unto us. So keep praying that the house of God will be completed in record time in the name of Jesus. And all that is needed to complete it. You know, sometimes it's not only money. We have all the money and then the team may not be working. So the people that God have been using, God will use them more in Jesus' name. And I want to also thank those who have been giving. You are giving and giving and giving and giving. The Lord who you are giving to will bless every one of you in Jesus' name. And for those of us who maybe they are giving before, and for some time, they have stopped. Or some who are never given. You know, people find it very easy to hide behind the cloud. There are records. Both here on earth and in heaven. So please, let every one of us give towards the completion of our Father's house. And as we do that, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Shall we rise as we pray? To you, Lord, be all the glory. To you, Jesus, be all the honor. To you, ancient of the be all the glory and adoration forevermore. To you, Lord, be all the glory. To you, ancient of this, be all the And so, our dear King of Glory, Lord, we want to thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the South South Week that's rounding up today. We thank you, Lord, for all the activities during the week, including the table tennis tournament that was held yesterday. We bless you because you use that as opportunity to preach your word. I pray, O King of Glory. The spirit of innovation may he come upon every one of us in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for opportunity for us to dance in your presence. David, dance in your presence. I pray, O King of glory, Lord, because we had this opportunity to dance in your presence, O King of glory. Lord, in blessing you, we bless every one of us in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the team that you use in planning the program. We thank you, Lord, for everyone that participated one way or the other. We say, Lord, none of them will, will lose their reward in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word that came forth today. We thank you, Lord, for your son that you used to bring forth the word. I pray, O King of glory, your word in his mouth. Lord, we ever be new in the name of Jesus. He has pronounced blessing upon us. Those blessings will be permanent in the name of Jesus. Lord, everything he has burned, Lord, they remain burned, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Everything that I set loose, they remain loose forever in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we lift him unto your hand. He's looking younger every day. I pray, oh King of glory, you continue to refresh him every day in the name of Jesus. That Lord, even the ministry you have committed into his hand, he will continue to make proof of the ministry in the name of Jesus. King of glory, Lord, we thank you. 
We hand over every one of us into your hand. Lord, as we go into the week, your presence will go before us, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. That your presence will be with us, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. By the time we gather on Sunday, even for the Southwest group, I pray, King of Glory, your power will show forth much more than before in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. You have been blessing us from the first Sunday of this month. Lord, we are in going to the fifth Sunday. I pray, O King of Glory, let us witness, Lord, your hand coming upon your people in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord, we thank you. We bless and worship you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And the church say, Amen. Amen. Shall we take two, um, Luke 10, 19? One, two, go. Behold, the Lord has given unto us power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. We are going to personalize it now. One, two, go. Behold, the Lord has given unto me, Alex Nwajefe, power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt me. Nothing will hurt you in the name of Jesus. So see you. For those of our guests who are invited, you are especially welcome. The way you have come to rejoice with us, you also be able to rejoice with us like this next year in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your seats will not be vacant in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Praise the Lord. The Southwest Yoruba Week commences on Sunday, 27th of... On Wednesday... No, I said Wednesday, 27th of, uh, of March at 6 p.m. Please, we implore that you invite your friends, invite friends, neighbors, family members, and, so, and as many people that are in genuine need of food stores. Please invite them to...